Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Starseed Astrologer and Spiritual Messenger from SacredSoulEmpowerment.com. Here to do your weekly angel card reading for Monday, February 19th through Sunday, February 25th, 2018. For this week's weekly reading, we'll be using the Power Angel Tarot Deck by Doreen Virtue for your main message. And your special message card, depending on your stone of choice this week, will be coming from the Messages from Your Angels deck, also by Doreen Virtue. So I hope everyone made it through last week's energy okay. We were in the first part of the week, the dark of the moon phase. We had some interesting energies going on, astrologically speaking, right before the new moon solar eclipse happened on Thursday. And... It might have been a little bit uh, of a challenge or a little bit frustrating to move through some of those energies. So this week's a whole new week and we again we've just had the the new moon solar eclipse energy so now we're in a waxing phase of the moon, a time of new beginnings, growth, expansion, new opportunities, a time to plant new seeds and especially so because this was an eclipse energy, the energy is much more powerful with an eclipse as far as those energies and of course that eclipse was in the sign of Aquarius and so this is an air sign a mental sign a sign that focuses on humanitarian efforts it focuses on future outcomes and bringing your dreams into fruition it has to do with scientific advances all forms of communication and information go with the sign Aquarius so let's start by taking a look at your special stones of choice for this week's weekly reading and we'll see what the messages are here momentarily but the first stone of choice here is sodalite i'm hoping you can kind of get a good look at that it's a little bit darker in the day and we have um, overcast skies today so i don't have a lot of light coming in um, from the outdoors, but the sodalite is a blue stone and this the blue stone deals with the throat chakra energy So this is about all forms of communication speaking teaching writing It's also again about ideas and thought processes and belief systems because that's all a part of the mental realm as well The sodalite can help with emotional healing it can help to ease any kind of stress or nervousness anger or fear your second stone of choice is red line jasper. Of course, this is a beautiful red stone. It's got some gray or, or brownish gray kind of um, stripes in it, as you can see here. And the red line jasper, it's going to relate to the root chakra energy that is our uh, base chakra, and it is about security. It's about manifestation. It's about feeling grounded. So all matters of security um, are focused on with the red line jasper. This stone also helps to assist in rectifying unjust circumstances and providing a kind of uh, rescue energy, if you will, in situations that are challenging. And it can also help to prevent setbacks. And then your last stone of choice it's this beautiful gray and white stone. I'm going to turn it over to this side here because it's more beautiful on this side. And this is called clam shell jasper. Now, the clam shell jasper, of course, again with that gray and then, of course, the white energies. You know, I guess in, in part with the white energies, we can focus on crown chakra, opening it up to higher wisdom and guidance. The stone itself is a powerful stone of protection against things that are not good for you. And it also is a stone that helps to ease any kind of emotional stresses, any emotional situations or circumstances that have been challenging and stressful. It also has an energy that provides a sense of relaxation and well-being and serenity. So again, your stones of choice for this week are the sodalite, the red line jasper, and the clamshell jasper. So let's start by looking at the astrological energies for the week. Actually, we're going to move to Wednesday the 21st. That's the first day of the week that has something very significant going on astrologically. And Venus is connecting with Neptune in Pisces on Wednesday. Now, we're going to feel this on Monday and Tuesday as Venus moves closer and closer to Neptune. So you will be feeling it from the beginning of the week. Venus rules love and relationships, the divine feminine principle, which is about receptivity and allowing and 
just being kind of that nurturing feminine energy. Venus also rules money, finances, and our personal resources. Now, because it's coming together with Neptune, they're both in the sign of Pisces, and Neptune actually rules Pisces in the zodiac, so it has a, a similar energy to it as Pisces. Piscean energy can be very elusive. It's not a manifestation sign. It's a very spiritual sign. It's considered a water sign, so it's very emotional. It's very um, compassionate, artistic, creative, but it's really just like Neptune kind of floaty you know again the creativity is great but sometimes there's an ungrounded kind of energy when we talk about Neptune again it's that elusive kind of energy where things can feel like they're dissipating or kind of fading away when Neptune is transiting something in your chart so the fact that it's coming together with uh, Venus can mean a couple of things on the positive side of things, Venus coming together with Neptune can have this unconditional love and dreamy fantasy kind of feeling to it. So again, it's creative. It's about falling in love, being in love. Um, it is about, uh, you know, kind of living the fantasy, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, sometimes we have cer certain circumstances to where it does feel like a fantasy because it's so wonderful and great and you feel so joyful and happy and in love and everything's right with the world and everything's perfect. So, you know, it, it can have that feeling about it. On the other hand, it can be a little bit deceptive with that feeling because sometimes fantasy does not equal reality or sometimes there's just more to, you know, the, the situation than what we're feeling or sensing or seeing at the moment. So it just means to be a little bit more aware. Be a little bit more aware of the reality of the situation. Try to be a little bit more grounded. It doesn't mean that there aren't these wonderful things around. It just means that we have to not only, um, like in, in other words, it's almost like wearing or being in a, in a place of rose-colored glasses. You know, it's like that can be part of the reality, but there's probably some other things surrounding us within relationships or circumstance that we need to have more clarity about. So along with money here, with Venus ruling money, it can have a dissipating effect to where maybe things happen and all of a sudden you see kind of money dissipating or in a sense disappearing. On the other hand, with it ruling money, Venus with Neptune here can be about um, magic, magical manifestation and creating money through visualization. That's really what it's going to be best at is creating through visualization to bring something eventually into manifestation. Um, so use this for the creative, magical quality of it. And again, just try to be a little bit more grounded as far as what you're seeing, sensing, feeling, or experiencing around you. On Friday the 23rd, the moon is in the sign of Gemini, and it's going to be making a challenging aspect to the sun, and then Mercury, and then Neptune, and then Venus, because all four of those planets are in the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is in a square or challenging aspect to Gemini, which again is where the moon is on that day. It then goes on, the moon and Gemini will then move forward after um, squaring or challenging Sun, Mercury, Neptune, and Venus, and then it will oppose Mars in the opposite sign from Gemini, which is Sagittarius. So what does all that mean? You know, the moon is about our emotions and our feelings, and it's in the logical analytical sign of Gemini, which is all about information and seeing things for what they are. So the moon in Gemini is a little bit of a difficult placement anyway, because the moon wants to feel and express emotionally, and Gemini wants to be logical and see things for the reality that they are and have all the information, have all the details. So again, that's already a little bit of a challenge. And then it's, again, um, connecting with all of these planets in Pisces, which is really elusive. Pisces is that elusive, spiritual, creative, fantasy-like energy, which Gemini doesn't necessarily do well with because Gemini is, again, logical, mental, analytical. So it's going to create this little bit of a challenge energy as far as um, I feel like what we see is not always what reality is. In other words, you might see things in third dimensional reality, certain situations, certain people in a certain way, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the way it is. 
So don't always listen to your logical mind. Also listen to your heart because that's what the Piscean energy would do. It's about unconditional love and compassion, that Pisces energy. So the fact that we have all four of those other planets that I mentioned in Pisces means feel with your heart, express with your heart. Um, you know, tune into that heart chakra of what feels right or what you sense is right or what you sense is the truth and not always listen to the, the logical ego mind, if you will, of that Gemini energy. And then the opposition to Mars there, again, it could cause some emotional frustration because, it, again, with that challenge to all the Pisces planets, it's a little bit of a tug of war. It's like the head versus the heart. You know, what we think versus what we feel. And then the opposition to Mars might uh, have us feeling, again, a little bit frustrated because we can't seem to sort things out very well. And then on Sunday, the 25th, we have two things going on. One is that Venus, after, again, on Wednesday, it connected with Neptune. Now it's moved on and it is in a challenging aspect to Mars and Sagittarius. Also on the same day, we have Mercury in Pisces, and that planet now is connecting with Neptune, just as Venus did earlier in the week. So Venus in a square aspect to Mars. This could bring in some challenging uh, situations in relationships, perhaps. Um, the Mars in Sagittarius wants to be freedom-oriented and do, the, do its own thing and, you know, just kind of... Uh, uh, kind of um, explore the world kind of energy and the Venus and Pisces is all again about unconditional love and fantasy and creativity and um, expressing through love and being sensitive and and so those two can bring about some relationship situations maybe where maybe one person in the relationship um, wants to be or express energies of closeness and the other person might be playing out the Mars and Sagittarius of just needing a little bit of freedom. Now, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily long term because this is a very short transit. But, you know, around that day, Sunday and maybe the day before and the day after, there's this energy of freedom, breaking free, doing my own thing, being independent that kind of comes in there. And so this can also be, too, about money. Uh, with Venus ruling money and Mars ruling energy and action, it can be about putting like money towards something and feeling mm, perhaps like you don't know where you're going to get the money or then you're feeling a little tapped out because you've spent the money. Or this is a creative energy with Venus in Pisces, feeling challenged as far as moving forward on your life path, your destiny path, your career path with that Mars in Sagittarius. So there's different ways that that energy can play out. Now with Mercury connecting with uh, Neptune, Mercury is the planet that rules the mental realm, our ideas, our thoughts, our communications with others as well as communications within ourselves. And with it connecting with Neptune, it's an excellent energy, an excellent time for meditation and creative writing and brainstorming either with yourself or with other people on ways to you know, make something better or uh, create something new. It's a very creative placement. On the other hand, when you're communicating with others, with Mercury connecting with Neptune, you want to make sure that you're reiterating what that person is saying because it'll be very easy to misinterpret what other people are saying or it might also be difficult for you to communicate exactly what you want and be clear about it. So this is about um, clarity. You know, this is about needing to gain some sort of clarity with communications, whether in person, email, text, whatever. Um, so just make sure that you're reiterating back and forth. I hear that you're saying this, is this what you mean? And things of that nature. But again, creative writing or creative projects will be, um, it'll be a very good energy at that time for that. All right, so that's the astrology for the week. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cards and see what our angels and guides have to say for the week. So turning over the first card, okay? We have the Nine of Michael. This is like the Nine of Air in the traditional tarot. And, you know, the number nine is the last of the single digits before we get to the number 10, right? So we're nearing the end of something. And the suit of Michael being like the suit of air or the suit of swords is the mental realm. So we're nearing the end of a way of thinking or maybe a way of believing. The message at the bottom says your worry is unnecessary because that's what our ego mind likes to do, right? Our ego mind likes to go into fear and anxiety and worry and doubts. And, you know, 
that's not the reality of things. Um, in truth, you know, if we stay centered in our higher soul self, or we stay centered in our spiritual selves, then everything is going to unfold a lot better. Everything is going to um, flow a lot better. And sometimes when we get caught up in the ego mind, it kind of, uh, again, logic versus intuition, you know, doesn't always mix well, or, or analyzing things and being logical with the mental mind, with the ego mind, doesn't always flow with how we feel and our heart chakra and, and uh, again, our intuitive, um, our intuitive thoughts or ideas that kind of want to flow in and, and give us some sort of inspirational guidance. Let's go ahead and read the rest of the card. Again, I'll read the first sentence. Your worry is unnecessary. Focus your thoughts on the outcome you desire. Release feelings of regret, guilt, or worry to your angels. Okay, so again, because it's the last of the single digits, it's nearing the end of something. So this is about releasing all of the ego mind fears, worries, doubts. They're all just an illusion. And it is about, again, how it says focus on the thoughts that you, you know, that you want to bring about uh, a certain outcome. So this is, again, good for visualization. Rather than thinking with your analytical mind, use your higher mind to visualize the outcome that you're looking for, the desire that you're trying to manifest. Um, and again, don't get caught up in what you see as being truth, because sometimes what we see in our reality isn't always truth. In other words, for instance, let's say we go into a store and somebody is at the counter ahead of us and let's say they're just having, you know, they're just really challenging maybe the person that's taking their money or maybe they even turn around and scowl at you. Does that mean automatically that they're a bad person, that they're a terrible person? No, not necessarily. It just might mean that they're having a bad day, right? We all have a bad day. Sometimes we get into a mood, so to speak. You don't know what's going on in that person's life. You know, that's the point, is that person may have just gotten some terrible news that's really upset them. And so it's kind of, you know, reflecting through their mood and how they're handling themselves. So just make sure that you realize that what you're seeing around you is not always the reality of the situation. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the next card. Okay, we have another Michael card. So this is the seven of Michael, like the seven of air, the seven of swords. The number seven numerologically is often about trust and faith and going within to connect with your higher soul self, you know, the spiritual essence of who you are to seek the answers inside of you that you're trying to find out. The message at the bottom says there is a better course of action available to you. Working alone may not be the best answer, and review all of the details. That's another thing the number seven is about, is the seven, you know, likes to analyze and look at the details. It's sort of like a Virgo energy. So all of you Virgos out there, you know, you're like the number seven in a lot of ways, to where it's like you want to analyze and look at the details and understand things logically, but then there's the other side that says, well, sometimes you just have to intuit, and sometimes you just have to trust and have faith, um, you know, and not always be so logical. And that's kind of what this card is about. Again, this is uh, the suit of the mental realm. So it is about maybe overanalyzing something or trying to make sense out of something that doesn't make sense. And instead, we're being forced in a, a very gentle and wonderful way through with our angels and guides and God Source Energy Universe to just trust and have faith. You know, it's, it's like your angel saying, trust us and have faith. We're leading you in the right direction. We're helping you behind the scenes. Everything's going to be all right. Let go of your worries and concerns. So both of the cards so far, the nine of Michael, the seven of Michael, sort of have a similar meaning. It's about letting go of worry, letting go of fears, letting go of doubts, and having trust and faith that not everything is as it seems to our mental, mental, logical mind. Let's go ahead and see what the last card says. Okay, the last card. Okay, we have Major Arcana number 11, and this is the Strength card with Archangel Ariel. And it says at the bottom, Strength and Grace through Kindness. Strength and Grace through Kindness. Self-confidence and forgiveness. 
So, you know, the first thing I, I feel is the very first word and actually the name of the tarot card itself, the Major Arcana uh, card itself, is strength. That's the first thing I feel is that this might be a week where we're dealing with a lot of mental imbalances because of things that don't seem to be making any sense logically. And we have to have strength and courage to move through them, okay? And you can see here we have an angel pictured with a lion, and the lion is always, you know, pictured or usually pictured on the strength card in, in the tarot decks. And the lion, you know, is meant to be a, a force, like it's a strong masculine force, stands for courage and strength, but at the same time, it's got a gentle nature about it. You know, it, we, we often see lions out in the wild and and the male lions are just kind of lying on the ground and they're just relaxing and they're very, you know, they seem very peaceful and at peace in their stillness. And, you know, it's actually the, the female lions that go out and hunt and, you know, take care of the young and etc. And it seems like the male lions, they're actually there for a form of protection. They protect the, the clan of uh, the, you know, the children and the female lions. So again, here, there's a gentle force here with the strength card. So we need to kind of combine our feminine nature with our masculine nature. So in other words, I feel like we need to um, allow, be receptive, be gentle, be gentle with ourselves and be gentle with others because again, there's gonna be a lot of things happening on the mental realm with people causing frustrations. But at the same time, you know, have that courage to take appropriate actions based on your intuition. Number 11, this is a master number here. In numerology, this is a very intuitive and psychic number. It deals with the abilities of the light worker. It deals with um, having the vision, having visionary powers, clairvoyance, you know, claircognizance, that kind of thing. So use the intuition to guide your actions this week and not the logical mind. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's your special message card depending on your stone of choice. Okay, so we're going to give these a little shuffle, and already I'm seeing this one here for the sodalite people. Okay, Xana. And the message from Xana for sodalite people says, You are protected from all types of harm. The worst is now behind you. I ask you to relax and feel safe. So the first thing I, I get when I read that um, information is that when it says the worst is behind you now, you know, things are basically looking up, getting better, maybe little by little, but they are getting better. And I feel like this is a result of last week's energy, the energy before the new moon solar eclipse on February 15th. So if you think of the beginning of last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, before the new moon solar eclipse, and maybe even the previous week to that, the energies were getting a little bit harried in that dark of the moon phase. And that's what I feel like uh, at least in part they're talking about with this card that things are now getting better it's going to get easier from here on out you know we're we're past that solar eclipse energy so now we can plant new seeds and have new beginnings and let things grow and evolve in the right direction know that you're divinely protected and guided again um, as you move forward I feel like there's something about paying attention to the heart chakra with this just because of the color green on the card so Again, tune into the heart chakra and how you feel or what feels right, what feels good to you, and make sure that you're um, going with that, that intuition of the heart chakra, that, that having that unconditional love and compassion for yourself to take care of yourself, and maybe even projecting that unconditional love and compassion of the heart chakra towards others this week. All right. For those of you that chose the red line jasper, this one's calling my attention. Red line jasper people, Merlina. <laughs> this is interesting. It says you are confused and indecisive because you do not have enough information. Do research or seek expert advice before making a decision. Well, that kind of you know, sums up the energies of this week where there's a lot of maybe confusing energies and things don't make any logical sense, just like the card says. So this is a time to look at or gather more information, do more research. You know, maybe you need to research websites or maybe you need to uh, call people that 
are more in the know of something that you're needing information on and talk to them. Um, this would be, like it says, get expert advice. Maybe you're needing to go to some sort of a lawyer or counselor or a spiritual advisor of some sort to get further information, to get some sort of clarity. Um, because, you know, sometimes when we're looking for clarity for ourselves, with situations that we're going through, just like a, a person who's an intuitive or a psychic. We often have to go to other psychic readers or other intuitives for clarity on things that's going on in our lives because it's more difficult to see our own stuff. It's more difficult to um, weed out, if you will, the energies of what's happening in our own lives. It's like we can help other people. We can see it clearly for other people, just like you maybe helping other family members or other friends kind of work through some of their own things, it's much easier to do that than it is to work through your own stuff. So don't feel you know bad in any way if you need to ask somebody for help, ask somebody for advice, or seek out that information from other sources. All right, and then for those of you that chose the clamshell jasper, clamshell jasper, Okay, we're just going to shuffle it again because I'm like seeing two or three cards and I'm like, okay, we need to just have one card here, Spirit. All right, this card. All right, Rosetta says, you have a gift for working with young people and your divine purpose involves helping, teaching, or parenting children. This is interesting because... You know, the moon, when I talked about the moon being in Gemini, the moon can represent children in our lives when we look at where the moon is in our astrological charts. And the sign of Gemini is all about teaching, teaching, learning, expressing information, sharing information. So for you this week, it seems like you need to pay um, attention to, again, sharing or teaching children. Now, this could be your own children. Uh, maybe you're involved with a group of children through a school or through some sort of uh, outside school activity. Um, maybe this is telling you what part of your life purpose is all about, is to help the children. Now, you know, when I say that, oftentimes that can be thought of as a metaphor for the children of humanity. It doesn't necessarily mean young little babies or young little toddlers, as is shown in the card. But this could be helping the children of humanity. That might be part of your life mission, is to awaken people. And when I say the children of humanity, that can mean 20-some-year-old, 30-some-year-old, 40-some-year-old people. We're all the children of humanity. And maybe it's part of your job to inform them, share information with them, educate them, teach them, awaken them in some way to their own gifts, to their own divinity, you know, to their own talents, to their own specialness. So again, the other thing is to um, actually, like I said, pay attention to um, the children that are in your life. And this again could include your pets as well. Our pets are our children. So, you know, in that way we're needing to nurture those more younger and innocent energies, those innocent and younger relationships um, with animals and uh, children, ours and others that we have. Okay, so I hope you've liked this weekly angel card reading. Sending out a big thank you again to, for everyone who watches my videos, shares my videos, subscribes to my channel, comments on my videos. Uh, I wanted to say, and I wanted to say it in the beginning, so for those of you still tuning in, I apologize for not being able to answer all of your comments the last few weeks. I normally try to answer everybody's comment when they comment on my YouTube videos, my weekly and monthly readings. But it's just been so busy with trying to, you know, pack and get ready to move and all the details associated with moving across the country. I've just missed the last, uh, you know, two, three, I don't even know how many weeks of com or answering everyone's comments. So I want to thank you all for your comments and I read them. I just haven't had time to answer them. So please continue to send them. Perhaps when I get resettled, I can get back into my regular routine of being able to answer all of your comments. But I wanted to say again, a big thank you and um, having much gratitude for you all in sending those. So uh, I want to send again, much love and light to all of you. And until we meet next week or in the monthly video for March, which is coming up very soon, um, I'm sending you again, many, many angel blessings of love and light. Mm -hmm.